Far Cry 2 is set in an unnamed African country, where a civil war is raging between two major factions. We, the player, control a mercenary, who is on a mission to fight and kill a mysterious arms dealer, the Jackal. The dude spent the last couple years with gearing up both factions, and he's supposed to be the main reason why everything is so shit in this country. The f*** are you looking at? So after arriving to the first destination, our character collapses. And guess who's there to wake him up? Yes, the jackal himself. It looks like we got infected with malaria. But what's even more interesting is that the jackal's favorite song is... Uh... Nothing else matters. Bro, that song just sucks. So he gets triggered and starts waving a machete. But he actually misses. And he keeps intimidating a paralyzed person. Ladies and gentlemen, the toughest arms dealer in Africa. He spares our life and leaves us at the hotel. And the next thing we wake up to is a surprise attack on this town. The situation is not that bad. They should be fine. As we escape, the character collapses again. And he doesn't have any remaining peers to cure the effects of the disease. He gets rescued by one of the factions. And in exchange he does some missions for them. These factions are the UFLL and the APR. Don't get too confused by them. It's literally the same shit but with different names. Both exploit the locals and have skinned zebras at their HQs. I will take care of your family, Mr. Zebra. At this point Far Cry 2 turns into a loneliness simulator. Going through all the savannas and jungles alone makes it one of the more challenging games to get into, in my opinion. It's just so lonely that sometimes you end up doing silly things and get totally lost in the atmosphere. The story gets pretty tedious quickly, because we have to complete missions for both sides to progress, and we are slowly turning into the same person we wanted to eliminate in the first place. We need malaria medicine to keep going, so we help the locals to escape this hellhole by providing them passports, and we get some pills in return. The only true ally we have in the game is this dude, Ruben. He's a journalist who covers all the events happening in the country. His blog is still up to this day, by the way. By doing missions, we can run into other foreign mercenaries, and they become our buddies. Once they are free, they will keep calling us whenever we are assigned with a new job. They will offer alternative ways to complete the missions, but most of the time they're just a pain in the ass. Oh, you are not even doing this to me. You're trying to cut me out. Nice try. He's so pissed. So after doing some main quests, we kill one of the faction leaders, resulting in a betrayal and an uprising. But at least we can choose who gets our help. Some random refugees in a church, or our so-called buddies. Haha, <laughs> easiest choice of my life. The next segment ends with the character passing out again, and he regains consciousness in a truck's bed, along with some dead buddies. He falls off the truck and we try to navigate him to a safe place, but he faints again. And who's there again helping his ass? You guessed it right, the jackal himself. You're stronger than I thought. From now our missions are simple. We need to wipe out all the leaders we have worked with. But wait a second. I found your family, Mr. Zebra! Are you happy now, Mr. Zebra? Where was I? Oh yes, leaders. The funny thing is that all of them back for their lives. But in the split second you turn away, they are pulling out their weapon and start shooting. Bunch of sneaky bastards, really. Fast forward a couple of missions, we need to retrieve a case full of diamonds. But just before the mission, our best buddy tries to convince us to take the case and leave this place with her instead. I mean, sounds reasonable. But the jackal says, nah, it's mine, bitch, leaving our hero passed out again. Just rename this shit to Sleeping Beauty already. So we wake up in a terribly guarded prison, make our way out with our best buddy, kill a bunch of leaders again, until we get a call from Ruben, who is in need of some help. He gives us some info. The war is coming to an end soon because the two factions are joining forces to shut down the riot, which is taking place at the prison. We head to the prison and meet the jackal. He doesn't want to fuel the war anymore. He wants to stop it. Interesting. And he also wants to free civilians with our help. So we are uniting with him for the last mission, which is to kill the two remaining leaders and recover some diamonds. The only problem is that our buddies have these diamonds, and things escalate quickly. You're wasting time, just shoot him. Wait, what? I can't shoot him, he's one of us. We made a deal, he's on his own. The fuck is wrong with you, old man? Really? Okay, this time I'm gonna be merciless. Eat this, you shit. Now we can confront the last of the leaders, the ones who saved us in the beginning. 
man. Didn't think you'd be here. Me neither. When we are done with these missions, we meet up with the Jackal, and he explains the situation. The APR and AF LL forces are coming for the civilians, so one of us needs to stop them by blowing up a cliff. And at the same time, the other one needs to bribe the guards with the diamonds to let the people escape. Whichever option we choose ends up killing the character. But at least 2 million refugees can safely leave this place. Oh, and uh, anarchy rules in the country to this day. Ruben's news reporting has been ignored and the Jackal's body was never found. What a depressing shit this is.